hello, have you seen what they have in new cars? They have this sensor that if you're driving along and you're distracted or you fall asleep, your car will let you know if you drift out of your lane and a sensor goes off and a, and a sound comes on that is uh, warning you that you're drifting. I want to do that today spiritually. I really think that the church at large is really in this kind of drift mode that so many people are really falling uh, prey to. I saw an article today on the, uh, one of the news uh, uh, apps that I look at, and they were talking about Franklin Graham was noticing that a lot of church uh, worship leaders are out there compelling people that uh, are telling people that they have, you know, lost their faith and lost confidence. And it's almost like they're evangelizing to turn people away from God. And it's really sad. Now, I'm not a pessimistic person towards God's church. And um, I, I, don't, I don't like the attitude when you hear this from uh, the pulpit or whatever, where it's like we're losing, we're losing, we're losing, and, and all is lost. And people are, are turning away from God with the feeling like it's just a creeping destruction that's happening. The creeping dis destruction is happening, but it is not for us as those who are not failing God and falling into this uh, cold uh, situation where we're going into apostasy. It is not for us to uh, despair and to act like that uh, we're about ready to throw our hands up, you know, and we're losing. I'm, we're not losing. I'm, I'm going to be in heaven soon. I'm going to see the Lord. I'm going to live in eternal life forever. I'm not losing. And I, I simply want to raise this warning as a, a loud beep, you know, uh, as a sensor and say, hey, 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 wake up if you are drifting. Have I ever drifted in my life? Yes, I have. Did God come and wake me up? Yes, he has. So I believe that God can use my voice to wake you up if you're drifting. And uh, but uh, if not, hopefully he'll use someone or something to happen in your life that wakes you that wakes you up. And I'm confident that he will. But it does, uh, you know, behoove us to understand that the one that doesn't listen to the sensor going off is the one who's going to crash. And that's horrible. They're going to end up in trouble. And that's a problem. Let me uh, take you first to a very important passage of scripture that um is uh, talking about the perilous times. It says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. These perilous times, th that uh, word perilous is noted in the, the New King James Version as uh, uh, stressful times. And boy, do we ever live in a stressful world uh, as never before. But listen to what it says about the people who uh, are either drifting or they are, are simply people who are going through the motions of religion <clears throat> without being true believers. And I think both of these uh, are true of these uh, examples. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Now, this is interesting because if you take this and you just turn it around into its opposite, then you have a description of what it looks like for people that are in love with God and that are on fire for God and that have not left their first love. Here's what it would look like. In the last days, the people that are truly saved are going to be in the same perilous times, but they will not be lovers of themselves. They will be putting God first and they will be loving others. So they'll be the opposite of this. They will not be lovers of money. They won't be living every day of their life thinking about how much money they can make and what they can attain to more than that is how they can use money to advance the kingdom of God and how they can trust God for the level of money that God can trust them with. Much different uh, perspective. 
uh, boasters. They, they will not be those who are proclaiming themselves to be something when they are nothing. Proud. They will have humility instead of pride because they're believers and they've seen the truth about themselves. Blasphemers. The last thing they do is use the name of the Lord in vain. They do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. They do not blaspheme the name of God or the word of God by scoffing at it. A lot of times blasphemers are scoffers. Uh, disobedient to parents. They are those who are not disobedient, but they are obedient. Unthankful. The uh, believer is thankful. The believer is not unholy, but is holy. The believer is not unloving, but actually loves God, loves uh, the their brothers and sisters in Christ. They love their family, and uh, they are truly loving people. Unforgiving. A believer is not unforgiving. He is forgiving. A believer is not a slanderer, but it's those who put down the idea of slandering others. Uh, uh, the believer is not without self-control. The believer has self-control. The believer won't be brutal. They will be tender and kind. Their dog even knows that they're a Christian because they're treated respectfully. Despisers of good. A believer would not be those who would join in despising that which is good. Traitors. A believer is loyal, not, not a traitor. Headstrong. A believer does not go forth headstrong, but submits to one another in the church, in the family, in the, in the, with authority. There is submission in their life. A haughty. A believer doesn't think of themselves more than they ought to think, and they don't walk around with a proud look. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. No, the believer says no to pleasure. We are in a day where you can spend all your time having fun. Fun, fun, fun on the weekend, fun at night, fun, 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 no time for the Bible, no time for church. Going to church has become sitting in front of your screen uh, on YouTube, on your phone or on your TV or whatever, and, and going ahead and listening to something spiritual so that you can have a form of godliness, but that's all it is. The form of godliness of doing that will be, just like this says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So as the censor today that I'm, I'm going to be for a moment, I want to just uh, put out this warning for those of you that are really, truly drifting and you just didn't realize it. That's what has happened to me in my life when I did drift. I had someone wake me up. I remember back when I was the, uh, assisting my dad in the church in Hayward, and I was 22 years old. My dad called me in. He said, listen, you look like you're drifting. You look like that you're just going through the motions. And that shocked me right into reality. And because I had enough humility to not be uh, put off by having some personal attack on my spiritual condition, I had to agree with him and acknowledge my uh, uh, drift and correct it. And I did immediately corrected it. I didn't realize I was drifting. Matthew 24, 12, Jesus warns, and because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. Are you making sure you're not one of those many? I hope you are. I want to make sure of that. How do I make sure of that? I make sure of it because I use some part of every day to have the dis spiritual disciplines in my life of prayer and reading the Bible and listening to scripture and worshiping God. These are the ways that I keep my uh, self alive alive in God and, and on fire for God. I do the same thing with my marriage. I, I devote uh, time to my marriage to make sure it doesn't drift into a sort of a cruise control. Uh, you know, the sensors that go off in your marriage that are telling you you're doing that is the complaints that start coming to you and the criticism and the things that your wife may be saying. Those are things that will tell you when you're drifting in your marriage. Your marriage doesn't make it on cruise control and your spiritual life surely cannot make it on cruise control. Uh, the Bible teaches us that there's going to be a great apostasy. And I know we're in the, bin, in, in the beginning of that great apostasy. And, and that is a, a big theological word, but I'll tell you what it means. It means desertion, a desertion or a departure from a person's religion or faith. And that doesn't happen suddenly. It happens gradually. When you have doubts, when you're not addressing those doubts by seeking uh, someone to help you, if you think that there's something about God that doesn't seem like it makes sense, are you seeking the answer or are you just saying, huh, there's another evidence I can count on and I can go ahead and just let go of my faith because I've thought of things that no one's answering. That, that's what's happening today is there is people 
uh, this this article uh, with Billy Graham, uh, not Billy Graham, but Franklin Graham. Uh, this article says that these these worship leaders are out there and they're saying things like the doubts that are coming to them and, and they're posing these questions as if they're the first ones who ever thought of these things. These All these questions and doubts have been answered by uh, scholars and Bible teachers for years. That You're not going to think of some uh, criticism toward your faith that someone hasn't already answered with a biblical answer that makes sense and that will calm that fleshly carnal nature of yours and make you understand the truth of the word of God. In Luke chapter 8 verse 14 Jesus warns or he uses a parable about a seed and a sower and he says the seed and the sower the seed was sown by the sower into thorny ground and that is the ones who were sown into the thorns are the ones who have heard they go out and are choked with that's the seed the, they are choked with cares with riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity they don't grow in matthew 24 it says but take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down that's a drift that's drifting with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come on you unexpectedly now to end this, I want to go to the book of Revelation, and I want to talk about three of seven churches. Seven churches, three of them are in pretty bad shape. Look at what it says about Ephesus. Jesus said, I have this against you. You've left your first love. Uh oh what do you do when you're drifting? He gives us the answer. Remember, therefore, from where you've fallen. Why are you there? Remember why you're there and repent and do the first works you did or the work she did at first, but if you do not, I am coming to you and I will remove your light, your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The answer to drifting is repentance. It's to take control and to get yourself right back to where you are supposed to be. It's like a diet. When you're on a diet, you weigh yourself. When you drift, you quit weighing yourself. And you it's because you don't want to see you're drifting. But when you go and weigh and you see you've gained five pounds, there's only one answer. Either throw away the scale and keep drifting until you weigh another 30 pounds or get on that scale every day and start doing something about your diet. This is what you got to do spiritually. The church in Sardis, Revelation 3.1, write this letter to the angel of the church in Sardis. Uh, this is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. Listen, I know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. That's a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That is the pe person who thinks because they have warm feelings about God, that that counts in some way toward their devotion to God and their love of God. It doesn't. Warm feelings, you believe in God, yes, God's in your life, God's doing this and that for you. Oh, fantastic, what are you doing? Where is your spiritual disciplines? How devoted are you and really is your spiritual life on cruise control or are you an active driver? That's the question. The last one in the, is the Church of Laodicea. We all know what this one is. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. If you were cold or hot, uh, then we could deal with it properly. We could commend you if you were hot. We could, you know, revive you if you were cold, but you're lukewarm. Okay, lukewarm Christians are Christians who drift. Closing this with Deuteronomy 5.29, and this is quite a compelling verse of Scripture. This is the heart of God, and it's the heart of God for everyone who drifts and pays no attention to all the alarms going off. If only they had such a mind, that is, to fear me and to keep all my commandments at all times so that it will go well for them and for their children forever. This parallels the heart of Jesus when he wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you to myself as a hen gathers her chicks, but you refused. This is the heart of God, and this is what he's calling us to do. Stop drifting. Don't drift anymore. Get your life back to being fervent and committed to church, Bible study, fellowship with other Christians, and to 
reading your Bible and uh, praying and fasting and seeking God in your life on a consistent basis. This is what God has called us to do. This is what Christians have testified has worked for them all through history of the Christian church. And this is what we must do. I really have a great attitude that the church is in great shape for those who are on fire for God. It's the, the people on the peripherals and the people who are drifting that are in bad shape. So if you are sure that you're in good shape, then help someone else to stop drifting. Be a little bit of an alarm if you can for them. Thanks for watching and don't drift. Keep your eyes on Jesus.